Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. This is one of the terms that relates to studies of the Godhead that was really developed in the uh, latter half of the first millennium AD. And it's perichoresis, which is just a Greek term for interpenetration, interpenetration of the persons of the Godhead. Now, let me tell you what this has to do with the study of God, what this is all talking about. Um, it became obvious as scripture was in hundreds of languages all around the world and common people had access to scripture that, you know, Jesus say, I am a father or one. And that, uh, you know, Jesus is the Father in flesh. He's the, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. These type things that uh, the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of uh, God and the Holy Spirit are obviously one. You know, Romans 8, 9 to 11, John 14, 16 through 18. It's just terms for, you know, the one true and living God. And so, in an effort to maintain Trinitarianism, they gradually developed this doctrine of perichoresis, which is interpenetration of the persons in the Godhead. And so, in their view, the Godhead, and this is totally imperfect, runs something like this. All right. And uh, I'm going to put F for Father, S for Son, and SP for Spirit. And so how the, and this is a very imperfect illustration, trying to detail Trinitarian beliefs. And trust me, I used to be Trinitarian. I'm in no way trying to disparage Trinitarianism. And there's some subsets of Trinitarianism that's overtly oneness. And uh, that's when they get their greatest anointing. And, and all. they don't get anointing when they're preaching on the Trinity. They get anointing when they're talking about the deity of Jesus Christ. So they would say that the Father kind of as a person, but you could speak of the son in the same terms of the father and even refer to him as the father because of interpenetration of the persons in the Godhead that uh, even though that there's three separate distinct persons, but of course persons not like you and I mean persons in most Trinitarianism that's called tritheism, but in theological terms, so I'm like, so why use it if you don't mean it? Um, and so the Spirit, you know, so you could be talking about the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Jesus, you know, Philippians 1.19 or wherever that's at. And it could mean the same thing because of interpenetration of persons in the Godhead. So that's kind of, let me show you just a couple more terms of classical Trinitarianism as well. One is called the Philoki controversy. And this is one of the big things that split the Roman Catholic Church from the Greek Orthodox or Eastern Orthodox Church. And it's called the Philoki Controversy. And it has to do, again, with Trinitarianism, is they would say, and I'm just going to make a circle in reference to Father, Son, and then Spirit. They would say, okay, Roman Catholics theologians would say that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. Whereas in Eastern Orthodoxy they would say the Spirit proceeds from the Father only. Philiki, like Philly, you know, uh, you know, uh, horse sires and all the Philly, Philiki, Philadelphia, brotherly love. Um, so sonship, the, the, the son, does the spirit proceed from the son as well as the father or merely from the father? Let me show you one more thing that a lot of people don't know about Trinitarianism is even though Trinitarianism would say the Son is eternal and the Holy Ghost is eternal, 
they would say terms like eternal generation. Generation means not eternal. It means beginning point in time, generation, genesis, beginnings, book of beginnings. So they would say the sun is eternally generated. This is, goes back to origin. We just did a study on Jerome and in the footnotes admitting that origin and, and really before that it doesn't admit it, this comes from Valentinus, who's a Gnostic, who probably gets it from Platonic philosophy and possibly from Pythagorean philosophy. But, it, but then they would say that uh, we're Heraclesian philosophy. We would believe in the monad, you know. And uh, this is even in the Hippolytus and uh, Tertullian. They would claim that oneness believers were monadist. That, uh, and believed in Heraclitus. So we'd say they're Platonic, they'd say you're Heraclesian. But uh, here's how they would say the Son and the Father, I mean, excuse me, the Son and the Spirit came to being. Now this is very important. I hope everybody will watch this. They would say that love must have an object. Now this is huge, especially in current Calvinist theology. It's called the family model of the Trinity. They would say love is not love without an object. So there was a time, well, and so time is the wrong word because they would say there was a time, that, okay, well, let me just say from eternity, the Father came first and He's the source of the Trinity. But the Son, even though He's eternal, came at a certain point in time because God is love and God needed an object of love. Now, the Bible totally obliterates that when the Bible is very clear. No man ever yet hate his own body, loves his own body. God is love. God is self-contained. The very definition of God means he needs nothing. <laughs> so he didn't need an object to love. But that's in their mind. There's no such thing as self-love and that that can be a, a high form of love when it pertains to God. So the God, the, the God the Father, had to have an object of his love, and that's the Son. Now, this is official Trinitarian doctrine. Now, you might say, well, my pastor's never taught that. Doesn't matter. He might not even know about it. But this is where the Trinity comes from. And always remember, the Catholic Church says if we can invent the Trinity, because they now have the See of Peter, they can invent anything. All right? So, the Father and the Son. And that the love that the Father and the Son had towards one another was so intense, and God had to love light, that it made the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And He was the result of the intense love going back and forth between the Father and Son. Now you might say, what does that have to do with the Philicky controversy? Well, did the Holy Spirit proceed merely from the Father, or did the Son have some form in that with His intense love as well? None of this is biblical. Stay in the book. Stay in Scripture. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. And to the Son, he saith, Hebrews 1, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Jesus said, If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. For in Jesus dwelleth currently all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, if you read Tertullian, you will find that that was the battle. They said, No, if you believe that, that is patropassionism that you believe in the Father suffers, that it was not the Father in Christ, it was the Word in Christ. Well, we would say the Word was with God and the Word was God. The Word was with the Father and the Word was the Father. You can't separate the Father from the Word. It's one God. There's not three persons in God. That is a non-scriptural thing. So, terminology on the Godhead. Um, Stick to the Bible because we don't want to worship idols. And Satan can deceive well-intentioned people, well-meaning people with tradition 
and strongholds to where things are actually memed into our very DNA, according to some studies, that we're built with an intrinsic understanding of it just because it's passed down. That's a whole other study. But uh, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. There's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. God bless. Love you in Jesus' name.